Hi. Welcome to the Tarnitz Knitting Podcast. This is my um, first episode and it may, may be my last depending on like how awkward I am while filming this. So a really, really quick intro about me. Like a lot of the people I watch and follow, I really got into knitting um, during the pandemic. I personally did learn when I was like 11. I did it for like a couple months um, and then gave up, but really, really dove back into knitting during the pandemic. Um, so particularly October of 2020, and I've been knitting for the past almost three years now. For the past year or so, um, I or actually a little bit more than a year or so ago, um, I discovered knitting Instagram and have been having like a really, really good time there. Made so many friends, like constantly inspired. And I think I'm um, at the point right now where I am like, I have so much knitting mojo. Um, I think everybody like, I, like I'm always talking about knitting. I, it's my person. It's like literally my only personality trait. It's kind of embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. It's um, interesting. Anyways my knitting mojo recently has been so strong and has been so strong for the past several months um i think earlier in the year my mojo was quite off because i was doing a lot of like gift knitting like i i love knitting for myself so that's so i wasn't really getting to do that much and then i went on this huge trip which was really really fun but i feel like dove back into knitting like really really probably in like april i'm like beyond excited for everything i've been knitting like everything just gives me joy i'm like enjoying knitting from stash i was on a little bit of a yarn band that i have like kind of bent a little bit instagram is a lot of fun like knitting instagram is a lot of fun but it's not quite the like medium i guess to be like chatty and can't really go into the same kind of depth and like go on to the million rambles that i tend to go on <laughs> when i'm talking about knitting uh, so I've been toying around with the idea of a knitting podcast for like a really long time. I always talk myself out of it, honestly. I think I wonder like, I get like, oh, what if somebody like I know in real life sees it and like laughs at it or something like that. And honestly, I just like realize it doesn't matter. Like it's not that serious. I just want to be able to talk to myself endlessly about knitting without any judgment. Uh, and I thought this was a perfect avenue. Um, I feel like it's also a really great opportunity for me to like look back on what I was knitting and like how I was feeling because like I'm never gonna be this new in knitting I don't know if I am new into knitting but I'm new into certain aspects of knitting like I am quite new when it comes to using like a fluff yarn for example so I'm never going to like I want to document like how did that feel for the first time um for myself and I'm excited I think I'm just gonna talk about like <sighs> my like endless pile of whips as well as kind of what my fall uh, knitting plans are. Uh, I don't know about you, but like if for whatever reason you're watching this video, I'm sure you know like high fiber knits, we'll see knitting, any knits, like, but um, yeah, I've been watching in particular, I watched their th videos back to back and they were just like so much fun. And I really wanna throw my hat in the ring or like throw my two cents in, in terms of what I um, will be knitting over the next couple of months let's dive in so uh, i will be looking down because i am like a pretty particular person i have like spreadsheets for everything i love so i have a knitting spreadsheet um so i will be looking down at that just so i remember so i have one two so currently i have one two three four five six seven eight yeah eight whips um i know that sounds wild I actually had nine, but I finished one two days ago. So first, first thing I want to talk about, and um, I don't have like some of the stuff I have here. Some of them I ha like have them in pro like they're all around. I'm I'm not gonna showcase everything, but I will have photos um, for everything I talk about. So the first thing that um, I am like, trying to get done is my cumulus tea. Um, I'll insert a photo here. So I'm doing the cumulus tea alongside a lot of my knitting Instagram friends. Um, we have a um, group of, like we have a group chat for knitters in uh, Toronto. So we did like a little mini kind of cal uh, amongst ourselves. We're calling it the summer in the six cal. Uh, so really just like any kind of summer project and we like motivate each other to do them. Yeah. So a lot of us are doing cumulus tea. So myself, Hypnit Hooray, Cozy Trico, um, and then also we'll see knitting. We're all doing cumulus teas. Brie B Knits, um, she's doing the um, Moonset Tea by Ozetta. Uh, and the cumulus tea, of course, everybody knows, is by Petite Knit. 
Um, Ivy Lulu, she was doing the pep talk. I think um, I'm the last, like me and Brie are the last ones um, left and we're still grinding through and finishing, um, but I'm almost done. I have like a ball and a half of yarn, like I have like 75 grams left to do. Um, I am doing a mod, um, so I'm making a little bit like a little bit more loose um, a bit more oversized I'm also making it like I wanted to do full sleeves but I don't have enough yarn but I'm so I'm doing three quarter sleeves just because I don't really wear t-shirts um, and if I do wear t-shirts I'm gonna like wear something on top of it or wear something under it I just felt like that wasn't so I'm doing three quarters because I like I just more comfy uh, with like more arm coverage yes um, I have so I'm finished one sleeve um, and I'm almost done the body so I think like I grinded out that sleeve in two days I my wrist we're, we're done um I like I think I knit for like six hours each day and I just like I just like tush 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 I just like somehow knit that out um and I do want to add a little bit of length to the body I think right now it's about like 55 centimeters maybe like 56 centimeters something like that I would like to get to at least 60 um that's how much I made like how long I made my like it, it's not I didn't make the pebble top but I made like an inspired version of the pebble top so that's how long that is and I feel like it's the perfect length to wear with dresses I'm uh, sorry with skirts as well as like if I wanted to wear them with pants I could um and it like just hits perfectly um where I would want it to so that's the gold fingers crossed I can get there um and if not it's just gonna be a little short and I will wear it with skirts rather than with pants because so that's that um the goal was to finish it in August I don't know if that's happening like technically I could finish it in four days if I like really really put my mind to it but I don't know if I want to put my mind to it <laughs> um truth be told we'll see um we'll see how it goes um uh, I might do it I might not uh, I want to at least finish this like the last sleeve by the end of August um, and then come September maybe like on and off work on the body and finish that off my like hard hard deadline is September 21st which is the end of summer um, so because this was our summer and summer in the six like six postal code of, but anyways the hard deadline is September 21st um, hopefully I can finish it uh, me and Brie are just like Brie as in like Brianna of breed bee nets um, we're just like motivating ourselves to do it um, and hopefully we'll get there and then we can all be like cute together uh, because that's the best part of doing cows you can match after in addition to that um, so the other thing that I wanted to finish in August that I did not finish in August still have some to go um, is this like really really basic slip over I'm um, oh my god I'm such a bad I, I'm so bad at this I didn't tell you any of the details about my cumulus tea okay so the cumulus tea by petite knit um, three millimeter needles literally killing me I will never do this again ever again in my life um, no thank you I'm using drop saffron in the color chalk um, drop saffron is really interesting where I'm not quite sure if it's marketed as a fingering weight yarn or fin or like a um, sport weight yarn. Um, based on the meterage, um, the the like marketed meterage, it's 175 meters per 50 grams, um, and that is typical. That's like indicative of a typical sport weight yarn. Um, that being said, cotton is heavier than um, like wool, so I wonder if it's actually like more of a fing like a heavy fingering uh, weight yarn and like because of the weight differential it like yeah like you get what i'm saying either way like three millimeters is perfect on it i've knit on 3.5 millimeters with it. it's a little bit holy uh and gappy and like the tech, it's fine it's still there's still coverage um and i think 3.25 also works really nicely so I, I do think it's more of like a heavy fingering it reminds me a lot of like the sock yarn weights um, or like the density of sock yarn but um, the other thing I'm working on so the next like going back but I'm making a very very basic slip over just like an easy throw over everything kind of a slip over um, a little bit oversized not too oversized I'm using the um, Briggs and Little Heritage yarn in the color brown heather and it's like I go back and forth and actually I have a skein of that on the side um, which is great but um, this is what it looks like and if I pull it up close you'll see like from afar and you <laughs> freaking kills me you can literally see the vegetation on it that's oh, freaking hilarious but from afar it's just like a nice like like dark mid like a mid-tone like a darker mid-tone brown it's not like like deep deep 
but it's like a pretty dark brown if you like the closer you get you see there's this like gorgeous heathering um and i think it is actually a little bit darker in person than it's picking up on camera but all of these like colors um it reminds me of like peppermint hot chocolate and i i feel like that's what's giving me the ick with this yarn sometimes because i chocolate and mint should not mix like fight me on that uh, but be nice like if you're gonna fight me on that be nice about it but still fight me like i do not like mint chocolate chip i do not like mint oreos like peppermint chocolate like no 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 these are two different sensations they should not be mixing and i feel like that's why like sometimes i get the ick with this yarn but um it's it's gorgeous it is gorgeous and i think it'll look amazing on me as like a slip over to wear over dresses um tops button downs whatever um i think it'll be like a really good versatile basic essentials piece which all the things i just said are all the same word <laughs> I'm using the Friday slipover, the Friday v neck slipover pattern by Petite Knit as a base, which was honestly like a really dumb decision. And I don't know why I made this dumb decision because I've made this dumb decision in the past and recognized that it was a dumb decision because um, I don't know if you're familiar, but the Friday slipover v neck is like it's broken ribs. So the proportions that that pattern says, um, it actually like because it's broken rib, you need like it kind of like it like it's. If you didn't do the broken rib pattern, like because there's a ribbing aspect to it, it's a little bit smaller in like length. Um, so if you didn't do that pattern, it's gonna be long, like your proportions are just gonna be off. So that plus um, I'm knitting this off gauge, I'm using 5.5 millimeter needles on this Aran weight yarn. Um, and the Friday Slip River calls for like a DK, like a, a lighter DK, so like a fingering um, mohair mix. So like my proportions are completely off. I did do like some of the knitting math to make it make sense but whenever I do gauge I really just focus on the like when I'm finessing things I um focus on the stitch count and I always forget about like the depth count or like the, the row count um but essentially <laughs> this is so embarrassing I made it and like the v-neck ended like an inch above my belly button and I didn't realize while I was knitting it I like finished the entire body and I'm like okay I'm almost done I bound off and then I like tried it on I'm like mom would never let me wear that leave the house in that be in the house with that um so I had some fixing to do um and I think this is like this is the really cool thing I think as you get like more experience as a knitter you don't just like have to follow patterns um you can figure things out and then you also learn how to fix your own mistakes so um instead of like ripping back and, or like starting over like I did so because it was top down um there was so much like in the round knitting that I didn't want to just like undo so what I actually did was I cut off the, the <laughs> sounds weird. I cut off the shoulder so basically where the v-neck met I cut from there and I picked up the stitches so I basically like if it was I don't know I'll use this as oh no <laughs> I'll use this as an example spoiler um so say this is the bottom of the slip over and this is where the v i was working from basically here here um but i didn't want to lose all the work i did here so i basically cut the stitches and picked up from here and then started working um bottom up um so that i could get a better better proportion and better fit for the back um so i finished the back panel of that um and also like it was already kind of weird because i think my like how much i picked like how much i started with was a little a little too small um so i just aggressively increased the armhole so it was just it was a little bit disproportionate anyway so it gave me an opportunity to fix that so um i finished the back panel i have just started the front panel so it's it's air and weight it's 5.5 millimeters um i don't anticipate it'll take me very long to work on but it's one of my passive projects um and what i mean by that is like i'm a very particular person when it comes to like dirtiness um or like outside inside dirt it's like you know the memes about like oh like do not sit on my couch or my bed with your outside clothes like i am like that to the extreme um, so if I'm knitting on something outside and like I go in the TTC and frankly like the TTC is disgusting like so if I'm gonna be knitting something on the TTC like ain't no way it's going in my like bed or going on my couch or like touching my floors I mean maybe it could touch my floors maybe 
Um, <laughs> um, so basically I only knit this when I'm on the TTC or like I go out or I'm like knitting at a park. So that's why I really wanted to crank it out by the end of summer because like how many parks am I going to be going to in the middle of winter? And also I, I want to wear it during the fall. So it shouldn't be too much knitting left. Um, once I'm done the body, I will like do a nice wash, a deep wash and I'll, like block it before I do the finishings. So then I can like the finishings will take me a day. I think the body will probably take me another or, like the front panels will probably take me another like three days, four days of knitting maybe. And so like if I'm counting by hours, I think I could finish in like 10 hours ish. Um, but I just need like I'm not gonna sit on a Saturday on my couch and knit it. I have to like plan an event to go like cafe hopping or go to a park. Like it's a passive knit. It's my like when I go outside and socialize kind of knit. So who knows when I'll finish it. Hopefully I finish it sometime in the fall so I can actually wear it. But there's not too much actual knitting left. Um, I'm gonna really briefly touch over to projects that I have on a little bit on ice. Um, I do have them. I'm not really gonna work on them until probably like September, October ish. Um, but I do have my twist loop sweater, but I, I honestly just want to, I just said what it was, but, um, I do want to just like have it on record so that I come back to it just from an accountability perspective. Um, but I am working on the twist loop sweater. Um, I'll insert a photo like maybe here. I'm using, um, oh my God, my I, I like celebrated my best friend's birthday yesterday and we went karaoke and like, we were like screaming, make, like Megan the Stallion and screaming twice. Um, in the karaoke room my so my throat is kind of like struggling um right now and i don't have a sugar water but whatever um small potatoes does not matter da, 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 da. yeah so for the twist of sweater i'm using here uh brings a little sport in evergreen i believe um and i'm double stranding it so it essentially makes um a worsted like a thicker worsted almost not quite Aaron. i would say it's more of like an like basically a worsted um weight yarn um five millimeter needles i'm not doing the recommend again i'm knitting off gauge um with the twist loop sweater um and it's i'm almost done like i'm almost done the yoke um and after that it's gonna be a lot like no more increases and stuff like that so we'll come back to that at a later time like i'm not i have not worked on it for like the past four or five months <laughs> i'm also working on a sophie shawl i bought some really cool yarn like um i think it's it's not variegated but it's like what is that word it's like a fade i guess i don't know um but it's a really cool yarn i got it um when i went to japan i got it from this store called yuzuwaya it's mona the yarn is called like the brand is called mona i, I don't know the like the specifics i threw away the band but really nice yarn um it is an acrylic like it's a fully acrylic yarn but i really like the colors um but actually i take it back it's not a very nice yarn like and it's not because it's acrylic that it's not a very nice yarn it's just because i've worked with really nice acrylics um but this yarn just like dries on my hands and even thinking about it i want to like even like thinking about it i want to like use some hand cream right now um but it makes my hands kind of dry so i don't get much use out of it uh i haven't been oh my god i can't speak i haven't been getting too much work into it but um I also it is also one of my passive whips and I have two other passive whips in rotation so like for taking around town um, when I'm knitting that's another reason so we'll figure that out when it gets there when we get there um, but hopefully I'll get that um, done in October so I can wear it in like November I I don't think I will but I, I do want to go to Japan again sometime in the fall I think maybe it'll be next fall uh, it would be wonderful to wear wear it there I don't know just like a full circle moment I'm, realistically I have a year to do that anyways so those are my two like kind of on ice projects that I will get back to later on in the year but just not now but I again want a record of it um one of my other like passive project that I'm working on um the classic by Aspas Trico which is a um yarn store in Montreal Canada Montreal Quebec in Canada it's a free pattern I love it I've made one before it's actually my first fully fully finished project absolutely it's, it's essentially looks like the louvre sweater solid basic pattern it has german short rows really easy um but for this one i'm basically instead of making a turtleneck i made it a crew neck i'm using um patins canadiana which is 100 percent acrylic yarn in the color medium green tea um, i will insert a photo here um and i love it like the yarn like 
is a little bit squeaky, um, but it's fine. I, I don't like, like, I like it. Um, and I honestly am a, I believe, like, for myself, I think it's very useful to have a lot of acrylic pieces in your wardrobe as you're making it too, just for ease of use and just like washing things um, and being able to throw it in the washer and like essentially get more hard wearing use out of items. Like I feel like I, I can be a little bit precious with my 100% merino, which I shouldn't be, but which I, or I should be, but not in the way that I am. But yeah, I, I really believe in like creating that essential wardrobe using um, a mix of really, really high quality um, and like luxurious, I won't say luxurious, but luxurious for me, um, kind of fibers as well as more everyday hard wearing. So my thoughts on our acrylic impromptu, welcome to my TED talk, welcome to my tar talk. <gasps> should I call, should I call this the tar talk podcast? Is that a good idea or is that a stupid idea? Um, let me know if that's a stupid idea because if you don't let me know, if I actually do an episode two, that is literally what I'm going to start calling it, the Tar Talks Knitting Podcast. Uh, what was I talking about? I don't even remember. Um, but yeah, it's it's coming along well. I honestly, um, I've done the body. Um, I actually have to redo the cast off because I did like a really lazy cast off because I just didn't have a, a needle with me, but I wanted to move onto the arms. I'm on the sleeve, it, it knits up pretty quickly. Um, I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, and it, yeah, again, it like it's knitting up pretty quickly it's just I don't actually sit down and work on it uh, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is after I'm done the sleeve I'm just gonna bind it off and like throw it in the washing machine so that I can get it done because one of my goals for 2023 was to end the year um, having finished all of my 2022 whips this is a 2022 whip by the way um, I've been working on it since September of last year because again very passive is a slow project so yeah I think that's what I'll do and then um, maybe not now, but maybe in October I'll do that, and that way I can kind of close the loop on this project. Uh, okay, but but this is another thing I was thinking of. Like, I am kind of mentally done with the project, and I just want the project, and I want it done, and I kind of just want to, like, check it off. But, but I, I bought way too many balls of yarn back, back before I really understood. Like, I, like, my first kind of big yarn haul got from Michaels when everything was like 30% off and I bought a bunch of like yarns like woolly, woolly, yeah, woolies, um, patterns, impeccable, and I bought like amounts not really understanding how much yarn I would actually need. So I have like eight balls of this yarn, um, which is like way more, no, do I have more than that? I think, yeah, I think I have eight balls of this yarn, which is way more than I need. I think I've used, I don't even know how much I've used. Um, but I definitely have like quite a bit left. I'll have quite a bit left over. So I'm thinking like maybe I just undo the bind off, undo the ribbing and just like keep knitting it until I'm done the yarn after I'm done the sleeves. Oh, and for the sleeves, I'm thinking I'm going to modify it to um, be like kind of like a, are they called bell sleeves? I don't know. Um, but not be like this typical tapered. Um, I am like shaping a little bit on the arms, but then I think once I get to the elbow, I'll just let it like be normal and then I'll cinch in at the wrist. Um, so it's not like a super, super dramatic like bell sleeve, but it's like a mild bell sleeve. Um, um, and like essentially, sorry, I literally am all over the place. Like I'm not meant for this life. I can't do this. I'm not good at this, but it's okay. We don't have to be good at things. Um, we just have to do things. Um, but I was trying to see if I have the yarn there, but I don't. But I, I have a couple more balls or a few more balls. So I think like I could just keep knitting the body until I'm done the yarn. Uh, and then maybe do a, a, an eye cord bind off rather than a ribbing. And then it can be like a really cute dress. Oh my God. And I've been, I recently have been hating doing ribbing. So maybe I'll even do that for the sleeves. So that it'll be like, oh, but no, I think I do need to. Yeah, no, I think I do need to do a little bit of ribbing for the wrist so that it will like cinch in properly um, on the wrist. But for the bottom hem, I think I'll just do an eye cord and maybe I will like just keep knitting it endlessly until I'm done the yarn. Because I honestly like, what am I gonna do with like three, three, 300 grams? I mean, I guess I could make a, a vest. I, I really could make a slip over with that easily, but I could make my mom a slip over with that because she loves green. Anyways, I clearly have so many directions I can go. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But those are the ideas. And maybe I'll come back to this after I'm done in like 17 months. And I'll think, oh, 
jokes on you you didn't either or like oh guess what you're still not dead so we'll see eight four five that is five out of the eight that i'm working on other three i actually have with me which is really exciting so um, I, I guess i'll start with this but like take a second um I think I've seen Emily of High Fiber Knits have this yarn in stash at one point and I think she like de-stashed it. I saw her have it I'm like, oh, we have similar taste and then she de-stashed it. I'm like, oh, I guess we don't. Um, but these are, um, this is Drops Fable. I don't remember the colorway. I think it's called Lavender something. Lavender. Ugh, now I have to look it up. Oh, I actually think it's just called Lavender. Well, that's great anticlimactic but um i kind of want to call these like lavender hay socks uh, because like why not i don't think that these will be for me i actually do have two balls of yarn either i will make a pair for myself and then have one be a gift but i or maybe both will be gifts i'm not 100 percent sure but they're gonna be the exact same sock either way but this pair i think is definitely going to be a gift um a gift knit i i have some I don't have a dad, but I have a long list of gift knits that I have to catch up on for like people's birthdays. So um, I promised many people socks. I also just want to make my parents socks for the for the autumn time because their feet get really cold. And <laughs> I just got distracted and started knitting. But I'm using um, for the needles here. I'm using the Chagu nine millimeters. This is two point seven, sorry, nine millimeters, nine inch cord um, with the two point seven five millimeter tips it's not like the interchangeables or anything it's just like a fixed circular fixed mini circular I would say I find 2.5 to be a little too tight like it creates a little bit too tight of a fabric in the sense of like it like the fabric feels so dense that I don't really enjoy like if I'm using superwash merino for example like it doesn't feel like merino anymore to me it just feels like a little too hard um this is like I think an acrylic blend or just a wool blend um, I don't I think it might even be super wash and it is super wash so that's great for gifts but I feel like this fabric is a little bit loose like I don't know if you can see but it's like you can I mean maybe it's not that bad but I can see like the little little things peeking out like the light peeking through it a little bit um so that's why I wonder if it'll actually be a good gift but um at the end of the day the person I'm gifting this to wants them for house socks um, versus like heavy duty wear socks so I think it'll be fine regardless because I want like to give something that's cute um but I also don't have it in me to knit with magic loop on socks right now um because the last time I did that it took me four months to finish a pair of socks because it was like so logistically heavy it was a cabled sock as well it was like so logistically heavy where I felt like I was doing more like logistics management than I was actual knitting with like moving the needle here and moving it there that it just it took like the joy out of knitting the sock for this one um I really wanted something and again I think like when it when it comes to gift knitting you I do lo like I love gift knitting like I love being able to give someone the gift when it's done but I think when something is a little bit harder to knit like for example like a sweater or, or even socks because they can be fiddly it's not as motive it like I am motivated by the idea of giving something to somebody and like seeing them happy especially like when it's somebody I love but it's it's not the same as making something for yourself and I think like a lot of us makers will agree with that I, mean, I know there are a lot of people who are process knitters who like pretty much strictly gift knit but I, I think many of us can relate so as a result of that um, i still want to be able to gift knit um, and i think my solution is to make the process as simple as possible um, so what i'm doing here is i'm just gonna knit like i think i'm done like not even half this ball 50 gram ball um, so i'm just gonna knit this into like a gigantic tube until it's done or almost done and then i'll do like the 10 rows of ribbing and like i'll bind off and then I'm going to do like the afterthought heel and afterthought toes and I'll use like I think what I'll use is I'll use drops Nord for that um which is more of a sport weight yarn and it's a little bit thicker so that way I can use like 2.5 millimeters on those like hard more hard wearing spots so that it can give it a little bit more structural integrity for the person wearing it and I also think it'll be nice because I have been enjoying kind of working this endlessly and it, like it's a little bit addictive and it's not that I honestly this is like maybe a night of knitting 
a night and a half like I cast it on one day I like spent I think maybe 30 minutes on it I cast it on did a little bit and then um, the others like I had a couple friends over um, and we were just chilling and I just was like casually knitting and I did all that in like a couple of hours so I don't anticipate this will take too long but I do anticipate once I'm done the tube and I have to like do the afterthought heel I think I do anticipate this will sit for a little bit um, because that's just who I am when it comes to knitting I like the flow I like the process so whenever you have to kind of like change change gears a little bit I pause also I feel like knitting has allowed me to very much sit and watch TV without any guilt because I can I, I can like right now I'm knitting right I can knit without looking unless obviously something complicated so when it's something like this where I'm just like knitting round and round and honestly I know we all hate purling but like also purling round and round is totally fine too for me maybe not round and round maybe like stocking it back and forth but I like to just watch a lot of um, media while I knit so whenever like it's like you're in the flow of a show you're in the flow of your knitting and then you have to like do something that you haven't done before like you're not like you it's not the same it's not as relaxing it's like thought and like I am definitely a process knitter but not because I like to think I like it's like relaxation it's meditative it is productive without having to feel productive or it feels productive without having to be productive but you are productive so I don't know it is productive but not that everything you do needs to be productive I'm totally fine to just exist but why did I get into this philosophical um, poll right now but yeah going back that's the plan um and i have a feeling she's gonna love it she is super supportive of my knitting she always listens um to me ramble on and on so i she's a very knitworthy friend so hopefully hopefully she adores them and i hope if she sees this she doesn't think that i like am dreading making her her gifts <laughs> that's not the case it's just it's just i love knitting for myself um the last two things are the things i'm absolutely most excited about and do I have it here? Oh my god, I don't even have it. I have to go run and get it. I am so done. Okay, I'm back. Um, I have it in a plastic bag. A Ziploc bag, if you will. Um, but... We're just gonna... I literally just have the back panel done. Oh my goodness gracious. I think it's this way. Um, I'm knitting the Fielding Cardigan by Ozetta um in literally the most beautiful yarn you will ever see in your life like i just like <laughs> on the wrong side too i just like stare at it and like just trace the colors and like third time's the charm right like look at that like oh my god look look at that like absolutely gorgeous this is the famous infamous whatever um noro madara in the colorway sake um, very hard to find if you're looking for noro you gotta i mean if you're looking for the coveted noro that you can never find that like everybody uses and you gotta go to the typical bliss website typical bliss um is the brand by tiffany Lou here on youtube um i'm obsessed with her her taste impeccable basically she makes something I need to have it um, which we'll have that we'll talk about in a second as well I got them from her website they were 30 bucks Canadian very standard price she I think she has some in her store at this exact moment so if you're looking for um, sake and also yen she has yen on her store as well I think um, definitely check that out but I like cried I literally tried to find three dupes of this um, that just did not work out and then she like she put it on her story that she had them and I immediately like done so back to the pattern I'm knitting the field day cardigan by Ozetta um or, or also known as Haley Haley I forget her last name but Haley um I think Ozetta is like her grandma's name or something like that um if I'm remembering correctly um and like her brand name is to like honor her grandma I also may be making that up completely <laughs> but um that's what I recall reading but I only have the back panel right now but already I'm in love I want her she's beautiful um I'm knitting this with my really good friend Yasmin of Cozy Trico we are both knitting field day 
items using the the same yarn um, that we both also got from Tiffany's store. She's knitting the field day jacket um, and I'm knitting the field day cardigan but jokes on me because I am like so off gauge that I'm basically making the field day jacket using the field day cardigan pattern um, so I just like did some fun quick math I think out of the gauge I have is like I think I have like 19 19 stitches versus the 22 that the cardigan calls for so I like size down like several I think I'm doing literally the smallest size and it's gonna fit me perfectly and I'm definitely not an extra small but that also means I can knit it faster so am I really losing out here no what did I want to say um it's gorgeous it's beautiful I'm not that far done but the goal is to finish it by the end of September so that I can enjoy it and fall in it and I do hope to visit Yaz sometime sometime in the fall then we can like twin with our cumulus tees and our medargans we're calling it oh my god like tell me and if you think this is lame please don't tell me it's lame please still tell me that it's cute but we're calling it our medargan cal because we're making madara cardigans madaragan yeah if you think that's corny please please lie to me please so excited about this project it's everything um it all makes sense like the price everything like i will say the knitting experience is a bit different like it's very soft but i just finished the stockholm sweater and i'm not gonna even i'm not gonna talk about this now but like in detail but i just finished the stockholm sweater and i used double sunday um and that was like luxury like lug it's 100 percent merino i think in comparison the madara is definitely like rougher um, it's still a good knitting experience it's still fun I think I'm because I'm using 4.5 I like my ideal knitting needle is a 3.5 to 4 millimeter bamboo like I feel like a magician when I'm knitting with that because like the stitches are just flying I am knitting this on 4.5 millimeter needles in my chow goos um, I bought a couple like thick circular chow goos just to like test it out before I get like the huge huge set and I'm glad I did because I I like I like the, the I love the chow goos but I don't love metal needles um I think I need to be working on something super rustic for me to really enjoy metal needles because like the friction against the bamboo like also ruins my bamboo and just doesn't feel the most pleasant but I think once I get into the flow like I'm working in the round I think oh there's no working in the round this is a jacket this is like a cardigan so um jokes but once I get to like working more of the length of the cable like I feel like right now like oh my god I have a plastic bag where I put my needles in and my stuff in so um like you see there's like so much space I think once I start using more of the length of the cord um I think it'll be like more it'll like flow nicer but as of right now like I do think and it could also just be because it's the 4.5 4 millimeters like I feel like I have to like like it is I, I can do it without knit, like looking at it but it just doesn't feel as feel the same um, which will be like the perfect segue into my next project which is oh my God, like this knitting combination is absolutely beautiful like I'm just gonna show you so this is just a back panel right now I'm knitting at low key it feels so small like but I'm on gauge and everything and honestly this is like it's probably like actually more like there and I'm just working on the increases so I think it'll be fine um and it's more like a fitted it's like a little bit more fitted than what I usually make anyways so that's why I think this just look, looks so, so tiny in comparison to the other one but I'm test knitting for Tiffany Lou of Typical Bliss the girl behind Typical Bliss and this is her typical mohair slip over. I'm using, so that, um, oh my God, what am I trying to say? That pattern uses um, like a DK weight yarn as well as two strands of mohair, but rather than using two strands of mohair, I am using um, Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. I previously bought like hella balls of this yarn to make the Novice Cardigan mohair, and um, I did that. Uh, and I had hella balls left over. I'm pairing that with the, the DK weight yarn to make this like glorious fabric. And I don't know if you can see like, again, how beautiful that is. It is like mildly holy, but I think I can't really see through it. I can just see the light through it, but it like feels so soft. And I think like, 
more so than the right side the wrong side feels so nice that i would like i'm excited to wear this even next to skin which i don't know how that will be when it's like a close to the garment we'll see but i think this will look gorgeous with you know what i'll just throw in like a photo of my novice cardigan mohair so you have the comparison but that's what that looks like and i think this will look absolutely gorgeous as like if i wear them together like a little matchy set and also i think this will look gorgeous with like a turtleneck underneath i've recently bought like a couple basics from uniqlo i'm excited and it's flying by it's on five millimeter needles it's like this is basically a day of knitting like in a day like on average i knit like at least four hours a day this is like four hours of knitting i just broke it up over like i had like an hour here an hour there over like this past weekend like i'm almost done the back the back panel like <laughs> backwards um but I'm, I'm pretty much almost done the back panel and it, i basically knit for four hours so um i anticipate this is gonna be a quick knit and i cannot wait to have it in my wardrobe for fall so in addition to the drops um i'll pack the drops brushed alpaca silk in sage green sorry i will say i'm also using um my base yarn is duo it's not really coming up true to color i feel like maybe this is pretty accurate duo by sun um Sun this is a 55 percent merino wool uh 45 percent cotton yarn and um i got it um where did i get it i got it from unit um, in Toronto, they were having a 20% off sale as they do every couple of months. So I bought this specifically for the uh, test because I knew I wanted to use this. And if you'll see, like these are definitely very different colors. This is more, so this is like dusty light green and this is sage green. And they are like very different, but then they create this beautiful like I, I don't want to call it marled like is it marled i don't know but it's like a very low ten oh actually i would say that drops brushed alpaca stuff kind of like overtakes it it's okay um i bought a little bit of extra of this just just because a i was worried um whenever i make a slip over i always get a certain amount of yarn um just to be safe i've been meaning to try the duo for a while um just because i am on the hunt for like that perfect transitional year-round go-to yarn i think like it's my personality to like when i like a yarn I'm like okay let me just get everything in this yarn i'll make all my sweaters in this yarn that's what i did with uh woolies and that was a bad decision because evidently i'm gonna want to try new things um and evidently i'm going to you know as i get used to things or as i like get deeper and deeper into knitting i'm going to want to try like higher quality and higher quality and higher quality um not everyone does but that's kind of my personality and i knew this but i i just wanted to buy all the woolies because i loved it at that time and i just wanted some retail therapy and I truly just wanted it so I have a bunch of woolly sweater quantities just sitting around in my stash um, which will be used but haven't been used anyways huge huge tangent to say that I'm on the hunt for that like perfect transitional um, go-to yarn um, and I'm trying to try a bunch so I bought one whole scarn um, coast as well we'll see I believe that's like a I, I forgot what the difference is between worsted and woolen spun Alexa what's the difference between worsted and woolen spun yarn from loosefullisledger.com. Worsted yarns are stronger and wear longer than woolen yarns and have less of a tendency to pill. I didn't know that. Worsted versus woolen spun yarns. Like, um, I believe it's like one of them, the fibers are brushed in the same direction, um, or all the fibers go in one direction, and then in the other, they go in like opposite. Uh, and I forget which one's which, but I uh, believe this is the one where they're all in kind of the same direction. So it results in like a lot smoother and like le like cleaner of a finish and like a more defined finish. So I'm really excited to see this, see how that looks. So I might have like a, an extra ball at the end so that I, I could just like knit up, make some like bookmarks, maybe make like, I was going to say gloves. That's probably not a good idea. Maybe like a little, little scarf next to or if that, not that I wear them. Um... who knows maybe i'll put in another project who knows I, i'm excited to see how this looks and feels knitted on its own because like the cotton merino like i think it'll be that perfect like 
looks beautiful, looks luxe, but I can wear all year round. Like I don't want to make woolen sweaters, like just merino sweaters that I can only wear for like five, six months of the year, which I I want to do that, but I do want some vers versatile pieces. So um, I'm really excited to see how the duo compares to the coast and then maybe I'll find something I absolutely love as a result. Yeah, that's everything that I'm working on right now. I do want to quickly also go over some of the things that I want to knit in fall. So in addition, like obviously all of these things that I'm working on, I would like to finish them. So that's eight whips. I don't know if I will be able to finish them all. The cumulus tea, I, I definitely, that's my, like, my priority. I want that done. Oh, that and the um, typical mohair slip over, which is a test knit, like those are 100% they have to be done. And then the um, uh, field day cardigan that I'm knitting alongside Yaz, I also want to prioritize that. So I think those are my top three. The basic slip over, honestly, I want that, I want that out of my life and done. Not in a bad way, but I want to wear it. And then also the socks. So I, I, yeah, I definitely think I can knit all of those. Um, I do think maybe like the twist loop sweater, I again would love to be done, but don't know if I will be. I wanna get at least five of those eight projects done this this um, coming season, like before the end of the year really. So I'm saying fall, but like really fall winter. In addition to that, I definitely want to go through a little bit of a socktober. Um, a, because I want to knit some of some socks for myself like truth be told and then in addition to that I, I really want to get a board um some of that test not test knitting my own gift knitting that um that I've been honestly slacking on so I have to knit not have to I want to knit one two three four five six pairs of no seven pairs of socks for gift knits um for my parents cousin friends and I be honest I think a lot of those pairs I think only one of those pairs are going to be on fingering weight the one that I'm working on right now I think everything else I'm going to be using worsted weight yarn and I think I'm going to be going into my acrylic collection and I have another gray um uh like dark gray yarn from Briggs and Little that's heritage um in like the the product line heritage and I would like to make socks for my dad for he ha he gets cold feet like not metaphorically, like literally, he gets cold feet really, really easily. Um, so I have knit him like polyester, like and like acrylic yarn socks before. Um, but I think like having like a really nice toasty woolen pair of socks will keep him really warm during the winter months. And I think he um, is actually probably like my number one, number one cheerleader when it comes to my knitting. Um, so I always feel really good about knitting for him as well as my mom um my mom just doesn't use instagram so she's not like liking all my photos and like commenting and such um though she like is as much of a cheerleader but i think my yeah anyways i i just want to knit both of my parents really nice socks to keep them warm and then i have a couple um socks that i want to knit for um various friends for their birthdays that have both passed and are um approaching like not, not every friend is getting a pair of socks. I don't have that in me, um, but there are people who have like specifically asked. Um, but other than that, um, I do have two things that I absolutely would love to cast on and potentially finish um, before the end of the year as well. Like, isn't this, isn't she beautiful? Like, let me show you that. You can see that I was swatching. The cake is not perfect anymore. So this is Yola in the colorway Takahashi. This is also an Aran weight yarn. I think one cake has about 400 meters. Um, I have two cakes, so 800 meters. Uh, and I would like to make a ranunculus. Um, I have been eyeing the ranunculus. Like I know, again, it's literally the most popular knitting pattern, knitting pattern in on Ravelry, but. I have been eyeing it for some time and I've been seeing recently in particular um, knitting Instagram or knit tubers in particular um, knitting their ranunculuses like I think I saw um, knit California knit one um, knitting flam flaminia um, who I who she's a smaller channel absolutely adore her she's like 
so so sweet like makes the cutest thing is such a great knitter tension is beautiful I, i've been watching her for some time but i've like recently re like rewatched her stuff um and i'm like really into into the work that she does um but she's knitting a ranunculus and i was talking to her on instagram like really briefly about it um, i think who else i swear i saw other people knit ranunculi ranunculi yeah but um it's wonderful to see like I feel like when I first started getting into like knitting Instagram and knitting YouTube and watching podcasts like a lot of people were like oh yeah that's like not really my thing but I think people like we as a community I feel like so many people got back into knitting during the pandemic so it's like really cool to see like the way that there's like this mass trend as we get like more familiar with more deeper into like knitting um yeah just just i don't even know if that's an observation or if that's even accurate but just something i've been feeling and then the other okay actually i lied there's two there's two more not one more after this I really want to like at least cast on the birch pullover by andrea andrea maori i have some um but i have some knitting for olive merino the color deep petroleum blue that i think would make a beautiful birch pullover um but she's um she's a beast um, the birch pullover is made on 2.75 millimeter needles um i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna size up to a 3.25 maybe a three but probably a 3.25 i did swatch i i like the fabric like i don't think i would ever even i, I will not even like entertain the thought of using a 2.75 also i think it'll be like way too bulky for me if that makes not not bulky because it is fine yarn but i just think it'll be too dense I, I, I run warmer so I think it's fine for it to be a little bit airy and I think um, as long as the 3.25 doesn't result in a fabric that is like really easy to wear out um, I think I'm fine she's a beast regardless um, because it's full all over um, half fisherman's rib uh, absolutely beautiful though so we we hope we can we hope we can muster up the courage to start her I'm gonna cast her out and I won't finish I really done will finish this year with all the other stuff that I have but I, I hope to cast her on and the last thing I am being have been like so inspired recently by True Lane and honestly I've been inspired by her for a while but um again I go through cycles like with podcasters so, like I re-watch um all their podcasts is like oftentimes what I do is even if I've watched a podcast, I'll like rewatch podcasts. I also like when I recently this happened with any knits as well. I like um, was watching her podcast and then she just made something that was like, like she made the Qatar top and it was just absolutely beautiful. I'm like, you know what? I like have been watching your podcast, but let me rewatch everything. I've done this. I did this with True Lane a couple months ago and I'm kind of like on my second round of that. Um, but True Lane, like anyone who watches her knows she has an impeccable eye for color and like an impeccable eye when it comes to like picking out hand dyed yarn and it could just be like she just everything she does is just something i love but the way she's able to just like figure out oh okay this is gonna be like the perfect speckle um she's genius she's amazing it's a talent like truly it's a talent because i have like no like depth perception when it comes to that kind of stuff something she did with her wednesday sweater um, and I realized the Wednesday sweater does this anyways. Uh, I realized like she like like petite knit petite knit did that first. But in my eyes, it's a true lane sweater. She did like a cream um, mo uh, what's it called a cream merino or cream like base yarn, and then she used a hand dyed mohair, like a speckly hand dyed mohair um, paired with it, and she made her Wednesday sweater. And it, I think she used like the kinetic knitter like a, a specific um, colorway, and it was literally like. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen, like rivals the Terrazzo sweater with Omitama, uh, Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo in the color om wait Omitama, like the one that all of knitting Instagram ha Instagram has gone crazy for. Like literally, I think it is one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever like. It's one of my favorite knitting um, knitted pieces that I've seen, and like she's just she's just so good at picking out colors that I. I don't know like she she did it i'm like i couldn't find, i won that exact same yarn like immediately like I, I need it in my life could not find it didn't make sense so i um actually bought this gorgeous gorgeous hand dyed yarn um in knit city montreal when i went back in may and i have some drops lima um in like the off-white color and i think like that will make a 
an absolutely beautiful sweater. Um, I think it'll, that's essentially, I think I got Surrey. I don't know if I got hand-dyed mohair or hand-dyed Surrey, to be honest, it's been a while. Um, but I think it should be able to make like, like definitely a worsted weight, but I think it might even like, cause Surrey's thicker. It might even be an Aran way, so I could get away with even like potentially a six millimeter needle and knit something really like, like knit something quicker is what I'm trying to say because like we love our four millimeter needles. We love, we love like the look of a three millimeter fabric, um, you know, product, but we don't like knitting it. We like knitting it. Actually, that's a lie. I, I do like knitting it. I just wish like when I'm knitting it, I like knitting it, but I just wish it didn't take as long. Like, if that makes sense. Like, once I got to the body of that cute musty, I'm like, this is enjoyable. But I just, like, I'm like, oh, this should have been three rounds by now. It's been one round, actually. Um, so I think, I don't know if that makes sense. But all I'm trying to say is that with six millimeter needles, I can knit a sweater relatively quickly. Like, easily, like, I could knit that in a month if I put my mind to it. I'm a slow knitter in general. So we'll see. We'll see. I could make a lento sweater, um, I could make a Marseille, so like a chestnut sweater, I do have um, yarn, I could make a Stockholm sweater, um, but knit it off gauge. So something about me is like, I knit things off gauge all the time. I I used to teach at Kumon, like I can do that math. Like I, I can do, I believe in my ability to do the math, to figure it out. And sometimes I don't want to, but like sometimes it's easy enough that I will. Um, especially for just like a really basic stockinette sweater so for me it's more about learning the techniques and learning when to do them so the Stockholm sweater even though it's like I think it's a 21 stitch gauge I like I'm pretty confident in my ability to adapt that to be like a worsted weight sweater or a bulky weight sweater like I think Mr. Bovin does this a lot uh, for with the Louisiana sweater and I like go queen like that is amazing I love that for you uh, I also like, obviously, I, I have like over 20 patterns. I, I buy patterns too, but I think I can use one of my existing patterns and knit them off gauge. Um, I don't know which one I'll do yet, but I essentially want to finesse the Wednesday sweater, but I don't want to buy the Wednesday sweater pattern. Like, I have so many patterns. I would like to use my patterns multiple times, but those are what I am hoping to knit. But with that, um, thank you so much for joining me as I rambled on and on for the past, like, hour and a half it looks like um hopefully um hopefully i'll come back and do another episode who knows honestly um i don't knit fast enough to have substantial updates um so maybe i'll see you in a couple of months maybe i'll see you never <laughs> but thanks for joining along <laughs>